So today is a bit of a standalone talk. September's all about new seasons. I mean, it's a funny time of year. We're entering, well, we live, in a, we live in a world of seasons, don't we? I mean, literally, where has the summer gone? Okay. <laughs> what a summer. I've heard that so many times from people. We, li we live in, we continue living in seasons. We're going to pray for the kids at the end of, and the young people at the end of this uh, service and as they enter a new season, new schools, maybe new classes. But we're always in motion. We're always going through the seasons. And we're acutely aware now that summer is kind of drawing to a close and autumn is creeping up. Who likes autumn? Good, I like autumn as well. Who doesn't like autumn? OK, a few folks, OK. Because that, that sense of winter coming around the corner and the dark nights are drawing in. And people, if you, if you struggle with sads where you, you need sunlight to make you happy, then, uh, well, you've missed out this year, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't go abroad, well, I'm sorry, you're sad. But um, we're constantly in motion through the seasons, but also we're in motion in seasons in our life. And we did a bit of work with our leaders recently. We looked at the different seasons of life um, that we might find ourselves in. These, uh, broadly speaking, you've got these seasons of early adulthood, uh, adulthood, and then middle years, and going into... Well, what do, we, what do we class that? Elderhood. That's a nice term, isn't it? Elderhood. <laughs> Elderhood. And each one of these seasons of your life has different challenges going on as well. So if you quickly look at that, you'll see that um, early adulthood, 18 to 22 around, is an exciting time. It's a, a time when things are developing. It can also be a traumatic time in your life. Um, time you're experimenting with your personal values, trying to figure out what your identity is about, um, shaping your gifts and abilities, maybe figuring out what career you want, what roles suit you. Um, and in terms of spirituality, it's an interesting time because you're coming out from under the covering maybe of your parents into your own spiritual identity. Uh, so it may be a time of deconstruction and, and reconstruction uh, as well. This is a chunk that many of us find ourselves in, uh, adulthood. And this has got different challenges, different experiences. It's a time when you grow in independence a time when your values and beliefs tend to get firmed up. It's when your career ambitions, and maybe you marry, maybe you parenting becomes part of your life at that stage. And it's when you really have to figure out how does faith work on the ground? How do you integrate a faith that's kind of notional into, how does it actually work on the ground? How, how does it help you make decisions? And how do you live out your faith with integrity when the challenges of life come along? Now, the middle years. Many of us find ourselves in the middle years. And it's a time when we often think, what have I done with my life? <laughs> what have I done with my life? What have I kind of achieved? What has been my, what will be my legacy? It's a time of appraisal. It can be a difficult time. It can be a time when uh, we suffer with empty nest syndrome, when the kids go and we're left alone with our partners <laughs> and we have to figure out what that's all about. <laughs> No, no laugh there, darling. <laughs> we're, we're learning to re reconnect. <laughs> we're helping with the grandkids. Maybe there's a squeeze from the sort of top, looking after elderly parents, and we're looking after grandkids. And we're in this sandwich of basically care uh, and responsibility. And it can be a real time of when we question our faith. We can, it can be times of what they call dark nights of the soul, when we really think, does this thing actually work? Does it fly? Is it real? Um, does it work? And we may, again... Uh, do some deconstruction and some reconstruction. We might experience what we call cognitive dissonance, where what we thought should work doesn't seem to work as we think it should work. And maybe our values and beliefs change and we kind of reformulate our faith. It's a time when the inward journey is really, really important. We can't escape ourselves. No matter where we go, we take ourselves with us. Have you noticed that? You go on holiday and you're there, and that's really annoying. Or you go, you go somewhere else and you're still there, and, and you, know, you can't escape yourself. So the, the inward journey uh, in these years is really important because we have to reconcile with ourselves and maybe we reconcile with things that we maybe think we should have done but haven't done. And maybe there's goals that we haven't achieved. Maybe there's things that we wanted to do we didn't do. And so it's a, it's a time of real potential deep transformation and also a time for potential midlife crisis because we just can't, we don't reconcile and we just act out and do crazy things. We buy you know, on the gold wings and we have earrings and we do all sorts of things to try and <laughs> reconcile IMGFs and do all sorts of things to try and reconcile um, 
you know, within ourselves, you know, where are we and what are we for and what's our value? And then we go into this last season, which we've, we've called elderhood, and this has different um, challenges and opportunities. It's time possibly of retirement and restructuring of life. It's a, it's a time when we have to accept that we are physically declining. Um, we have got new limitations upon ourselves. Um, might be a time when we experience bereavement or grief. Um, when we lose things that are valuable to us, things seem to be slipping away. There's a growing awareness of our own mortality. We're not going to live forever. And um, it's a real time of, of challenge and opportunity because God can really come close at those times and really uh, express uh, his love and his heart to us and take us deeper into him in our advancing years. It's a time when we really need to make peace with ourselves. We really need to come to that place of, um, of ultimate reconciliation with ourselves. So we're we're entering eternity with God from that place of peace and um, self-acceptance. And it can be a time of real rich thankfulness for the life lived and the things that we've seen, the things that we've done, the friends that we've had. And we can really come alongside other people with uh, our experience and our wisdom and our support and our prayers and be real sort of fathers and mothers to people in different stages of their lives. So we experience these different seasons of life that we all go through at different times. And also, we've got the seasons of our emotions, which are also taking place. You know, you've got, you're moving forward in time, and your mood is constantly changing. You could be in a really positive place this morning. You could be in a, in a, a more of a negative space this morning, depending on where you find yourself with your mood. Your mood's constantly fluctuating, depending upon your circumstances, your physical um, how you are physically, your, maybe your mental well-being. Your mood is constantly fluctuating as we move through the seasons. And our mood often affects our spirituality. We find it much harder sometimes to connect with God in those low seasons than those high seasons. We kind of long for the mountaintop experiences uh, and we find it much harder to see God in the valleys. And it feels like when, when the, our mood dips, it feels a bit like, even though God's present in both seasons, it's a bit like you know when the clouds come out it's really hard to find God sometimes when our mood dips and we, we think that God's somehow above the clouds, but actually where we are, we can't see God. God's obscured by our feelings. We can find it really hard to find God at these times. So with all this movement and all this change and all this seasonal change, you can feel a bit like we're constantly on one of these, can't it? <laughs> Life often feels like we're strapped into some sort of crazy ride uh, and we're constantly in motion. We're constantly in motion. Nothing is static. Uh, we think we've got things down and then they, they, they change and things change and, and things happen and we're constantly in motion. And uh, it can be challenging. We can't stop the ride and get off. You just can't stop the world and say, I want to get off, even though someone wrote a song once about that. You can't do it. You can't get off. So I want to run through a few things this morning, maybe helpful to help us. How do we cope? with this roller coaster of life that we find ourselves in, all these different seasons we're constantly passing through. The first one's pretty obvious, but it's often one we forget to do when we're in the midst of the season. The first thing we need to say is, God, where are you in this season? Where are you in this particular season of my life at this particular time? You see, you can't escape the season that you're in. Whether it's circumstantial, whether it's to do with your age, whether it's to do with where, where you are emotionally, even where we are in the particular seasons of the year, you can't escape the season that you're in. So the question has to be, how do you move through this season with God? How do you find God in this season that you're in? Some seasons you might want to prolong because you're enjoying them so much, you want them to last forever. Some seasons you find you're not enjoying so much and you want that season to come to an end quickly. We can't often control how long we'll be in a particular season. But God is present in every season. In every season of our lives, God is present with us. And so a question we need to ask is, God, where are you in this particular season of my life? Because God's present in the seasons, not just the ones we think are favourable to him, but he's present in all the seasons. 
There's a book called Ecclesiastes in our Bible, full of various wisdom writings. And in there it says, it says this. Sow your seed in the morning, and at evening let your hands not be idle. For you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. And what the writer's saying there is saying, if you just sow your seed in the morning and do nothing in the evening, you're limiting your expectation of when God can move in your life. If your only expectation is that when you sow seed in the morning it grows and any sowed seed sown in the evening doesn't grow, then you'll limit your expectation of in what season God can move. You rely on your own limited understanding of when you think God can be present and when he can work in your life, when he'll reveal himself to you. And so what the writer of Ecclesiastes says, he said, we should look for God in every season. We should be sowing seed in the morning and in the evening because God's able to bring forth growth from either seed. Even though our own experience may have been, we know we've only ever seen seed grow in the morning. But actually God may want to show us something new or reveal something different to us in the season that we're in. Your past experience isn't always going to be your future experience. But that's how many people live their lives. They, they limit their future experience on what they've experienced in the past. But this person says, don't limit what God can do. Don't limit where God can bring forth growth. Yes, you may have only ever seen seed sow in the morning grow. But actually, if God wants to, he can bring forth growth from seed sown in the evening. So God is present in every season and we need to recognise that even if the season we're in doesn't feel favourable or doesn't feel particularly good at the moment, how can we find God in that season? A link to that as a second question, God, how can I worship you and grow in this season I'm in? The God who made you and made me also made the seasons. He put everything in motion. The universe is in motion. The planets are in motion. The seasons are in motion. You are in motion, continually passing from one season to the next and to the next. And the God who made all of this has made us able to be people who can worship and grow in every season. He's made us fit for the life that we live. Again, Ecclesiastes says this, he has made everything beautiful in its time. So there's beauty and there's treasure for you to find in the particular season that you find yourself in. Whatever you feel about the season you're currently in, there's treasure and there's beauty for you to find through God in this season. And there's a reason to continue to worship God, even if it's a very difficult season, even if it feels like a season where it's not favourable to God being present, there's a reason for you to continue to worship him. There's a reason for you to continue to grow in him. And so we ask God for help. It's something we're so often so bad at as Christians. We think we've got to muscle through and be independent and just grind it out. We often just forget to ask God for help. God, where are you in this season? How can I worship and grow with you in this season I find myself in? We ask God to navigate for us when we've lost our bearings. We ask God to reveal the beauty when we can't see beyond the clouds. And asking for help is such an important thing to do as believers. We ask God, where are you in this season? How can I make it through this season with you. Jesus continually sought strength from his father and he continually sought strength from the friends he had around him. But often we just try and do it on our own. So we need to ask for help. Ask for help from God. Ask for help from friends. This is the season I'm in. This is how it makes me feel. Can you help me? Can you help me worship and grow in this season? Every season you're in, will come to an end. 
and there will be another season waiting for you to transition into whether it's to do with your age or your circumstance or your health. Every season will come to an end and you'll enter into a new season. So the third question I want to really put to us this morning is, how can I prepare myself well for the next season? Because the next season is coming and you will transition into it. This might be the next season of the year, might be the next season of your life, might be the next season of your emotions, might be the next season of your spirituality, maybe the next season of your circumstances. You will transition into a new season. So if this season you're in is going to end, how do you prepare yourself well to transition into the next one? The Apostle Paul, he wrote to Timothy, who was, who was encouraging as a young leader, and he encouraged him by saying this. He said, be prepared in season and out of season. And this word here means be present. Be present in the seasons. Be present in between the seasons. Be present even if you think the season isn't a favorable one. Your job is to be present. So we could fully translate this slightly differently as be fully present at all times. We spend a lot of time trying to escape the season that we're in, don't we? We spend a lot of time trying to distract ourselves away from the season we find ourselves in. Often we find it much easier to try and escape or avoid being present in the season that we find ourselves. Psychologists talk about two different ways of handling the season or the circumstance that you find yourself in. And one's called trap, and one's called track. And let's look at them for a moment. So, they talk about a trigger. Something happens in your life, in the season that you're in. And then you and I, well, we respond to what happens. We, some, we feel and we think and, and we respond to the situation or the trigger that happens to us. And at this point, we've got two ways to go. We can't change the response. So we can't change the trigger that's happening. We get to the response. We've got two ways to go. The first one is some sort of avoidance pattern, which is what we're very good at. We think about some way of avoiding having to deal with the thing that life's presented to us. We do something to cope that normally involves some form of escapism or avoidance. And you've all got your escapism and avoidance techniques, haven't you? <laughs> You're all acutely aware of what you do when you feel like you don't want to face life anymore. It might involve food, it might involve drink, it might involve social media, it might involve... It could involve 101 things, but you know the type of things that you and I do to avoid having to face life. The problem with avoidance patterns is they have consequences short-term and long-term consequences in our life. And often, they don't make us feel particularly good. The things that we've chosen to do, or the cycles we get into, they have consequences that don't particularly make us feel good. Even though they help us cope and avoid having to deal with the season we're in, they may not make us feel good in the long term. And this is what psychologists call the trap response, the T-R-A-P, the trap response to dealing with the stuff that life throws at you. Now, as we said, we can't, really, we can't really change this top half of this diagram because stuff happens and we're going to feel and we're going to think. And, and that's going to be the case for whatever we do. But we can try and control what happens down the other side of this diagram. And we can think about alternative ways of coping with what life throws at us. And what we're trying to do now is how can we do something that fits with our values and helps us grow in our well-being. So life's going to throw stuff at us. It's going to come along. How can we respond in a way that fits with our values and helps our well-being and our long-term growth? So we've suggested this morning as believers that we can... So what can you do differently? What's, what's more in, in line with your values and improves your well-being? Well, we've said this morning that we can try and find God in the season. 
We can try and ask for help in the season and we can look for treasure in the season. And this is about us being present in every season of life. Rather than trying to avoid or escape the season we find ourselves in, we say to God, where are you in this season? Psychologists wouldn't talk about this because that's, this, is, this is from a, a faith perspective. They would just talk about you figuring out how to maybe do some stuff better. But for us, we've got God present in the seasons. Every season we're in, God is present with us. And so an alternative way of coping rather than running or hiding or escaping is to say, God, where are you in this season? I'm finding it really, really difficult. I'm finding it really stressful. I'm finding it really hard. I just want to run. I want to hide. I want to escape. Where are you? And how can you help me in this season? Where's the treasure? Where's the value in this season? And by doing this response, what that's going to do, the consequence is we're going to continue to worship and grow through every season of life. That's a consequence of this action, the track side of this, we're going to continue to worship and grow through every season of life. Because that's God's heart for you and for me. That we don't try and escape the season, we don't try and leapfrog over the seasons, we don't just bury our head in the sand and, and wait for the season to go away. But through every season of life, we continue to worship and to grow in our faith. So maybe have a think this morning. Maybe you're very familiar with the one side of this diagram. Think about the things that we, maybe you do when, when life gets difficult, when the pressure comes on, you know, and you feel like you want to run and you want to escape. What might be a natural thing that you do? What's the avoidance pattern that you adopt that you find yourself doing? We've all got different ways of coping. And they make us feel better for a time, but then we kind of left with that kind of sort of sense of guilt a sense of sort of feeling like we're not really facing up to life, we're not really making progress, you know, we might feel numb, we're not being present. Whereas God's intention for you and for me is to be fully present in all the seasons. And then maybe think about this week when the pressure comes on, saying, God, where are you in this situation? Where are you in this moment? Help me. We sang the song this morning, didn't we? You called me out upon the waters. Well, Peter walked a few steps and then sank. And what did he say? Did he keep silent? He said, help. <laughs> help, Jesus, help. And Jesus reached out a hand and brought him back up to the surface. But often we're sinking and we're not asking God for help. We're not asking people for help. We're just kind of stoically going down. But God is always present in every season, in every situation for us. And his heart for you and his heart for me is that we continue to grow and worship. So as we come into this next season, you know, we're coming into autumn, we're coming into a season of new beginnings. It can be a time when you feel anxious. It can be a time when you feel not particularly looking forward to the winter nights. God, how can I grow to the seasons of the year? Some churches are very good with their liturgy. They have liturgical calendars specifically to help them with growing at different times so people don't lose sight of God within different seasons of the year. What's your strategy for continuing to grow and be healthy through the winter? Not losing sight of who God is, even though the sun may not be present in the sky very much. It's still opportunity for you to grow in that season. Or maybe emotionally, where are you at the moment? Does it feel like God has been eclipsed by the clouds and you can't see him? He's still present in your life. God, where are you in my season? How can I grow? How can I worship? One day, every season will end. That's what the scriptures tell us. One day, History will be rolled up and we'll move into eternity. And that'll be a completely different season. But until that happens, Jesus promises to be with us. 
He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you through all the seasons. I'll be with you to the very end of the age when all the seasons will finally pass away. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that God has set eternity in the human heart. And we know deep down that we're just journeying through, don't we? We have that sense. It talks in the scriptures about being sojourners, about being not fully comfortable on this earth because we know we're moving through the seasons to an ultimate place, an ultimate destination, which the Bible tells us is, is to be with Jesus and to be with the Father forever in eternity. And that eternity has been set in our hearts. And sometimes because we don't feel comfortable with where we are, we'll try and escape the season. We'll try and escape the journey. But actually, it's God's heart for you that you travel on through the seasons into eternity and that you find the treasure and you're present in every season of your life. Because through the seasons, God is preparing you for the ultimate destination. He's preparing you and shaping you and forming you so when you get to heaven, God isn't a stranger. God isn't a stranger because you have found him and experienced him and walked with him through every season of your life. So God is preparing you. So just think about maybe this week, you know, God, I want to find you in my season. You've all got a unique journey. You're on a unique place in your own life history with God, with your emotions, with your situation. How can I find you, God, in my season? How can I receive your help? How can I worship and grow in this season as we prepare to walk with God into eternity?